So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi villains and welcome to Fort Love of Palm Grab Podcast. I'm back from my self-imposed exile. I'm very windswept looking hairdo at the moment. And back for the post-match of Burnley versus Aston Villa. And I suppose a game that a result is a result, I suppose, really, is, is what we, we would call that that game today. Uh, got out of jail, were very, very wasteful in front of goal. They scored two really poor goals. And, and something I'm going to talk about in a minute when Paddy is on, because I think a lot of the ire that's directed at our defence is directed at the wrong person. Um, and and we'll, we'll discuss that in a moment, uh, I think, once Paddy jumps on there. But uh, Aston Villa 3, Burnley 2. Aston Villa joined top of the table again. With uh, with Liverpool, albeit with Liverpool of a game in hand, it was really important to Villa win this game today. I think above all else, I, I'm 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 going to say, and it's easy saying now because we've won, but I'm just checking other results there. But I'm going to say that uh, winning today was the main thing for us. I'm not really too concerned about the about the performance. I'm I'm not really in in, in hindsight too concerned about the performance. There it is. There are areas that we're not as that we are not as good in, and we, there's a couple of players who look like they need a break. Um, whole left side is just woeful uh, at the minute, um, but there are some other bright bright spots, um, and we'll talk about it in a moment. Paddy's just jumped on there, so I'm going to bring him on. Paddy, Aston Villa three, Burnley two. We made that game way harder for ourselves than we absolutely needed to. Yeah, and uh, just let you know now, I've only got 10 minutes because uh, That's fine. Stuart, Atwell decided, Stuart Atwell decided to play 20 minutes in total extra time, so uh, I'm under a bit of pressure. Um, I'm also under a bit of pressure with the blood pressure because that was a bloody hard watch. It was a hard watch through the fingers, even I couldn't watch the penalty at the end. Just seemed to linger and linger and linger, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. look, in fairness, he got he got the goal. That's the most important thing. And you're right what you said there, the, the, the three points were vital because my Christmas was fucking ruined up until today and it wasn't getting much better until until that penalty was awarded. Um, I think there's a lot of players out there are blowing out of their arse and need a fucking rest. So I'm hoping that there is enough um, players that need game time next week that will get us over the line against... Uh, against um, Middlesbrough because I, I just feel like there's some players that could do it a little bit of a break. Yeah, and, and I think I think it's it's interesting that the um I think it's interesting that, that game is coming when it's coming. I think we need it. I think we need a bit uh, uh, like Sorry, that, that's wrong because I think that we would go strong in the FA Cup, but I think the change of focus from the Premier League to a different competition might be what the team needs because I think the team felt under pressure when they could have gone top of the league. And I and I know it's easy to say that now in hindsight, but I do, I think that that is um, the case. Am I looking at something absolutely crazy here? Uh, oh no, it's just not, not updated yet. Sorry. I'm looking here and it's saying that Villa lost, um, <laughs> the Villa lost to Burnley yeah. um, and, and who scored at the moment. But it looks like it's just... Look, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't totally put this on the players because... Uh, Sheffield United came and parked the bus and fair play to them, we've done yeah. it many a time but the VAR decisions last Saturday or last Friday night has really cost us in, in this Christmas period if we'd, have gone and lost, if we'd have gone and lost to Man United after after beating Sheffield United it would have been completely different Yeah, and boy, boy god it doesn't get any better does it, Stuart Atwell coming oh. out today, oh my god like, he was bad wasn't it? Like I don't think, like I know, I know Sander Berger has a handful of Dougie Louise Dougie Louise's uh, shirt. Like, if we have a player get sent off for a second jello for that, I'm probably in fits of rage right now. Like, just little oh. things like that. I thought the penalty, like, there was no look at the penalty for, for Watkins just before they scored their second goal. It's just so disjointed, everything. It's so dis disjointed. With he, even even down to the fact that he he wouldn't allow um, Konza to remonstrate with him in the first couple of minutes, yeah. even though yeah. it was blatantly obvious he made a fucking... Bollock drop right in, hour, yeah. in the corner. And then he books Konza, yet he allows them surround him for the penalty and not book yeah. anybody. And as a yeah. result, causes a row with Jacob Ramsey. 
the, I have no idea what Howard Webb is telling these people to do. Why are you allowed to surround the referee when we were told at the start of the season it wasn't acceptable? Yet yeah, week after week after fucking week, they allow the big six away with it, so they have to allow everyone else away with it. It's as simple as that. Except it's, for the one person that runs up to him and he gets a yellow card. Yeah, it's it's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. So for for all around the yeah. the, the, the British Isles yeah. and Ireland, yeah, for all the kids that are doing this to referees, that's your answer, why, Mister Howard? That's why you can't get young people to referee in in a in a schoolboy match because they think this is the norm because you're letting them away with it, even though you yeah. said you wouldn't. So, like it's... the the whole the whole thing is rotten from the top down. And that was a poor performance today, piss poor performance by the referee. And it was poor enough from us too, both defensively and in attack. We had many chances to go and kill them off, and we didn't. And that I ultimately agree. is what irks me today. Um, I like agree. You, you look at Bailey, Watkins, Diaby, all the chances. Uh, Ramsey had a chance as well. To, to McGinn, oh, yeah. McGinn actually took his chance very well. A great save. Um, and, and boy, good. How, how well... To that goalkeeper play, he's a cracking goalkeeper. He's going, he's going, he's going for the future. If they take Ramsdale to the Euros or whatever competition is on this year, yeah, Euros. If they take Ramsdale as the backup goalkeeper beside Nick Pope, so if they, like, like if it's Pickford, Ramsdale, and Nick Pope, they're mad because hmm. you do not need depth as far as Nick Pope from your goalkeepers. Bring James Trafford, it's done deal. I sat here and I said, What are I wasn't quite sure whether Burnley were spending 20 million for somebody who had only played in League Two, League One. Uh, and that goalkeeper is brilliant. He's brilliant and uh, fair play to him. And I'm put my hand up here saying I was bang. Oh, it wasn't that I was wrong that I said he was poor. I just didn't understand the, the confidence Burnley had in him. But my God, I've watched him about four times this year. And every time he's rock solid, rock solid. Mm. He is their best yeah. player. Like it, England, take, it's okay. Take him to the Euros. There's no need for you to have Ramsdale in there who can't get a game at Arsenal. Anyway, that's my impassioned plea for the young man, young young Trafford. Um, as opposed to all Trafford. Um, <laughs> Good enough Paddy, I, I want I want to talk about I want to talk about our defence because um, defence is very leaky at the moment. Defence is very unsure. The defence uh, looks like it's you know I, a, lot, a lot of people withhold a lot of ire for Clement Longley. I think he got beaten uh, on the sideline too easily today. Um, I, I'm struggling to see what Diego Carlos is doing in, in this back line as well. Um, yeah. I'm well, actually more annoyed with Diego Carlos because of the oh, yeah, high hopes yeah. and, 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 yeah. his, and his physicality he's supposed to bring to this league. And the more I look at it, the more I don't see him doing what we all expect him to do. And, and it's, it's like at the start you go, oh, he's coming back from the Achilles injury or whatever. But I'm still yet to see him do what we all expected him to do. And and I, I did a podcast with somebody recently. Um, well, it was about three or four months ago. And I was asked who might be a player that goes out. I think it was, I was talking to Dan Bardell on, on something. Maybe it was just via, via text. And I went, Diego Carlos, if a bid came in from, from Saudi with 20 million for, for Diego Carlos, I'd let him go. And I, I was saying that maybe about three, three months ago, just based on what we have. But he's beginning to concern me slightly. Um, in there, specifically when he's supposed to be the main man, and I and look, he wasn't great today. He wasn't great against Man United, and he wasn't, uh, and 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 he hasn't really put his foot his best foot forward. But yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest because if we're if we're having a a, a go at long there for certain things, we kind of have to do the same for Diego Carlos. So we can't just leave him off the hook. Yeah, and and look, we, we've we spoken many times about the players we we've let come back into our thoughts like there's a lot, lot of people saying in, in in the comments there about Leon Bailey Leon Bailey is now one of our most influential players on the pitch yeah. from 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 a, from a man who had zero influence for two years he's suddenly there so we need to, we need to let Clement Longley and give him time and, and and I don't think he needs that time I think I think it's just a case of he needs just a little bit more game time just to come up to speed um, I I'm, I have no problem with his performance today. Yes, he get beaten. To, one of them, I thought he was very lucky for the for the goal itself. It was very lucky to get past him because it, it takes a ricochet off off the two of them before it gets there. But probably should have dealt with it in a tackle forced. But anyway, that's the that's the way he's brought up. Um, to to do standing tackles as opposed to dive in John Duran style at the end. Um, and and that ultimately led to a goal. And I don't blame him for that in the slightest. Um, but Diego Carlos for me is a worry. And I just feel that our our 
our, our need for another right back is even more so now because I think Longley would have played better alongside Esri Conza than he would alongside Diego Carlos. And and I agree I agree with everyone here saying that he was good against uh, Man City. I know I have right. Michael and yeah. there's a couple of other people asking about his game. Every single player was a 10 against Man City. Every mm-hmm. single player was a 10 against Man City. Um, Diego Carlos was not like it was not good against Manchester United when we lost. And he was the reason he was the the pivotal reason for me why we lost against Manchester United. And today mm-hmm. I felt that his his positioning was just really, really poor. I also felt Douglas Luiz was really poor today as well. And he was poor against Manchester United. I'm just calling out Do- Diego Carlos here and, and the fact that I need to see more from him because he's not defending the way that I expected him to when he first came into the team. No. And, and he's not doing and, it. Con- and we've, got to be, we've also got to be mindful that all season... Uh, Diego Carlos, when he's been in there, he has had that protection of Bubakar Kamara, which is missing the exactly. last three games. Hundred percent. So hundred percent. The blame, the blame for what's happened in the last three games will loosely be thrown at Bubakar Kamara for his reaction, but finger pointing at Emmy Martinez for the shit that that caused them to get the red card. So mm. we've got, we've got to rule that out of the game. It's got to stop. Even tonight, picking up a silly yellow card for wasting time. Um, I didn't think he took long, but uh, uh, it's it's. It's just what the referee is going to give him now because that's per- perceived what he does in every game. Um, and look, we're lucky to be out the other side of this with three points. We're, let, let's not forget that we finished on a high from what could have been a really poor Christmas. We're sitting joint top of the league. Uh, obviously, there's other games to come that will probably change that and I'm fine with that. But the big miss, what we've seen over the last three games is Bubakar Kamara. Because oh, 100%, yeah. just just when we lose the ball to sit to sit deep there and and to make that a back five as opposed to a back three, and be very switched on the way he is, and to boss the game and point people around the pitch like he did against Man City, that that got overlooked as well on the day. He was immense that day. So, um, I think we're I think we're running on fumes today. I think we're missing bodies. I think it's I think it's gonna take a little bit of recovery. I hope a few of our so-called stars can go away and get a rest this week, um, even if it's just a few days off before before we play um, our next game, because it's vitally important that we, we mm. get people rested and recovered and ready for when we play Everton in two weeks' time. Yeah, and look, with Diego Carlos, I'm just pointing out that like Carlos and Longley are not our first choice centre half partnership. They're both equally to blame. Neither of the two of them look a hundred percent comfortable mm. in there in this team at the moment. And the reason I'm bringing it up is that when Pau Torres is back in the team, and a lot of you guys have alluded to it as well. That was my next piece. That goes a right back is very pivotal to this to, to where we need to go from a squad depth point of view because, and a couple of you guys have said it in the chats there as well. Esri Kanza beside Pau Torres is our best centre back partnership. It just is. And uh, it's, I know that like Diego Carlos will get better, you know, um, I'm sure he will. I, I, I'm not as particularly down on Clement Longley today. Like you could, you could, you could see the one or two um, ricks he had today, Clement Longley. Absolutely. You certainly, certainly could. And he, he didn't, he wasn't that power replacement in the defense, in the, in the passing uh, side of things either. Like uh, he was against, who was it, Paddy, where he had an absolutely brilliant game uh, recently? Was it uh, Warsaw? Or was it? Yeah. It might be one of the games in the. Yeah. So long as has, has, has had one or two good games. He's had. Uh, yeah, he's had some poor games yeah. as well. Yeah, he's had some poor games as well. But look, I think the main the, the reason the reason I bring it up is because there are two goals today. Longley lost his man for um for well Longley just didn't really move for a centre half for their goal. One where Darrow Shea knocked it back and there was someone in the back post beat Moreno. I think Darrow Shea did it at the back post and then um. Jacob Ramsey also didn't follow his man. I think it was Jacob Ramsey that lost his man and then they hit in at the back post. And then just the Lyle Foster goal. That goal, is Villa can see that goal too often. That that same type of goal too often. And they need to figure out how to fix it. And mm. in fairness to Carlos, I'll give him fair fair uh, juice for this one. He bust his absolute nuts to get back to try and get a block in there. He just couldn't get back in time because uh, Moreno didn't slow down Foster. Foster's blew past, past Moreno. And I, I will give him credit for that. But it's just little things. It's it's the positional side of things, I think, for our two centre-halves at the moment. Their spacing isn't as rock-solid as Pau Torres and, and, and Ezra Kahn's is at the minute. And that's why we're shipping yeah. goals. And that's why we're shipping goals from players coming from out wide, like Foster did. Just came from out wide and brought his run in and was able to angle it in and score. You know, And that's that's the concern for me. 
um, at, at the minute. But look, it's it's still yeah. good news. Three points, three points today, joint top of the table, Liverpool of Newcastle during the week or on Monday night. Bring it on, you know, bring that game on. I think that's game, that game is going to be an absolute cracker. And uh, who knows what way that finishes. But Aston Villa are uh, I've got back up in the horse today. Um, 16, like our goal difference is plus 16 at the moment, 42 points, 20 games played. Bring it on, as I say. Like the, the season is still looking really, really, uh, really, really good for us. Don't let don't let my little uh, soliloquy on Diego Carlos kind of uh, sour any moments or anything like that. But uh, Villa have a very, very interesting transfer window coming up, and we're in a super position to be able to attract players that might be looking and seeing. Yeah, listen, Aston Villa, second in the table, third in the table in the Premier League, and Una Emery, obviously, there as well. This is really important that we were able to stay in that elevated position over the last couple of weeks when things weren't going so well. Yeah, um, and and look, it, it, all all things will point back to that that uh, that red card, but that 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 uh, that game last Friday night has just really ruined my Christmas. The performance of of uh, what, whatever clown didn't give a penalty to to Ollie Watkins would have changed the complexion of the game, um, and and we'd be looking at a completely different picture, being three points clear at the top of the league. But I, I thought you have to give some credit to to Burnley having gone down to even before they went down to ten men. I thought they bossed the midfield fairly well and found it made it very hard for us to pass through it. It wasn't the park the bus scenario that that Sheffield United brought more of a higher press into midfield, and uh, look, I I think they I think they could stay up. I think they could cause problems for other teams. I've said it all along. Yeah. I said it in the team sheet tantrum that I was having a battle with Mark. Mark Holmes over this all season, and uh, I still believe they they have enough to stay up, and I think they've proven today that they'll they'll be a match for everyone. But I'm trying not to be down too despondent, and I'm glad you were here when when I came on here because I think it might have been a completely different podcast if I had to do it on my own. <laughs> so uh, I I am angry, I am annoyed, I'm annoyed at a lot of things over the last week. But it's all about how you bounce back. We bounced back and got three points, albeit fortuitous today. Very lucky to be sitting here after picking up the three points, yeah. and it 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 all depends now. How do, how do we go? How do we get through next weekend? And how do we get three points at Everton, and then deal with what the rest of the season has to come by? And for me, that is going to take a few players. And as we go into your favourite time of the year, I'm sure there'll be many of uh, scouting reports rolled out over the next few days. But uh, I'm going to go away and join everybody cool. else for for dinner and uh i hope you all have a lovely uh new year's eve and a bright and prosperous new year's so stay safe keep the faith up the villa see you patty i'm going to stay on for another couple of minutes there as well because i want to get through some of the comments there but uh thanks really for jumping on patty dean Avers says the torres and kanza and center back and another right back and attacker for january neil said Havertz last season would be good i i may have but I think last season I was really I was really um, banging the drum for Timo Werner to come into this team, and there's been a bit of talk about Timo Werner potentially coming into this team recently. So when I saw it, I was like, "Hmm, that's an interesting one. I wonder if that comes in." I've just always been a big Timo Werner fan, uh, even when he was at Chelsea and he was missing chances. I just think this team is really set up for him. Um, there's there's text message threads between myself and Paddy about uh, uh, about my um, my irrational love for Timo Werner. But that would be nice, I think, for me. And let's see what happens. Um, bam, 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 bam. Where else are we? Uh, there was another one there as well. Sea Lion I is talking about one fight and Alex Baina. For me, in an ideal world, um, I, I would be blown away with a feather if one fight was uh, somebody who came. Um, but Alex Baina might be a different story. I think we might see something there. I think we will. I think we will get a striker. There's a couple of people uh, mentioning about striking options. I think if we sign a striker. He may. He. I think if we get a striker, it's not going to be a huge name. Well, it, relatively speaking, I think it could be a different type. And I've said this the whole time. I've said Emery is going to get his twenty-eight to thirty-year-old striker that's going to be completely different to anything that we have, and he hasn't gotten it yet. And I still think that he will. I still think that there's strikers out there. I have heard of a name that I'm not going to that this uh, um this. I don't know whether it's true or not, so that's why I'm not even going to say it. But a uh, completely different type of striker to to Ali Watkins, um, and not a huge name. 
you know, and I think that's where Emery's going to go with that striking position, specifically mid season. I think more so the Alex Bayona piece that you've mentioned there as well, Lionel, is uh, is is plausible. I think it's a, it's a position in that attacking left uh, position that I think he wants more out of or wants more options in there as well. And I know we've got Zaniolo, and I know we've got the Abbey, and I know we've got B- uh, Bailey, but they all seem to favour that let that right hand side and want to play over there. We've got Jacob Ramsey in there at the moment, and I think somebody like an Alex Bayona who can play uh, ten. Eight or six at a at a you know at a comfortable level or at a decent level and um, might be somebody that he might look at. But if we were to have a big a big splash, I think I would put money on Alex Bayona for um, for that position. I don't know why. I just think he's he's a, he's a decent fit as well. Um, where else are we? Um, mm, 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 mm. Where else are we? Where else are we? Where else are we? Where else are we? There was a co- another couple of comments there. Um, Rod Humble says we're knackered in some players uh, and so and, and played some awful games, but so are all the other top four teams. Exactly, Rod. Exactly. That's why um <coughs> that's why I was saying, you know, being second in the league, joint top of the league, and Aston Villa are still punching above their weight, and we will continue to do that. We've got, you know, really, really looking forward to this because other teams are dropping points, Arsenal dropping points at West Ham, Spurs dropping points uh, at Brighton in 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 you know, Brighton really uh, Dominant performance up until the last 10 minutes there. Liverpool versus Newcastle coming soon. Uh, we've dropped points, as I say, against Manchester United. This league is wide open. This league, uh, the top seven positions here, the top six positions anyway, I think, is wide, wide open uh, at the minute. And um, it's it's really exciting. It's really exciting. But as I say, when we talk about games and we talk about the players, we're literally just going to talk about them in, in silos you know as i say with regards to how we feel they're playing and where we think their potential could be and like with diego carlos i know there's more there and i know that he needs to get more comfortable within this system as well and 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 he can't you know there's no there's no reason to say that he can't if anybody knows that knows that it's us as aston villa fans you know players can elevate themselves mid-season all you got to do is look at leon bailey leon bailey scoring goals again and we didn't even talk about the goals aston villa scored leon bailey's goal Brilliant. His footwork is fantastic. I think somebody said it in the comments there as well. Leon Bailey is so confident at the moment, and he is a look good, feel good, play good player. And his footwork is just mesmerizing at the minute. He's making the right choices. He's there was times there when Diaby was getting in his way. He didn't panic. He just kind of stopped, let Diaby get out of his way, and then restarted the attack again. He's turned into a really, really nice player for us. Better than a nice player. He's got, I, I, I can't remember how many goals has he got, got so far this season. I'm going to Google it there because, uh, um, because the, the reason I wanted to say that is because um, Ollie Watkins is, is, uh, has more assists again today. He's the most assist in the Premier League. You know, Leon Bailey coming up with goals. Uh, John McGinn, John McGinn had a lovely shot today that James Trafford uh, saved. Uh, Douglas Louise with the penalty today. Um, yeah, it goes in off the crossbar. It's one of those ones, but it, it was that was uh, kind of a microcosm of how we played today. You know, we were today was 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 a tired performance, and I think that's that's fine. Um, but if we didn't get this win today, it would like it's it, it, there would be talks of a rush. Um, with regards to it. but winning cures all. Days away, um, time away. I think is needed for this team. Maybe even just a, a break. Um, I think we need to get players in, as in if there's some players to come back from injury, maybe get Paul back in there again. It is a shame that the that Dina is going to be out for about six weeks. Uh, was it, what did they say? I think he said 25 days, um, which is an oddly um, specific amount of time that uh, Daruna Emery said. Um, so we'll see if that is the case. But uh, yeah, I think the squad is, uh, is, is still out. Like in a way, even though we didn't perform well today, I still think we are outperforming ourselves in other areas and in other ways because like Ollie Watkins two assists today, his pass for the first goal for Bailey was brilliant. It was a pass into space. It wasn't anyone in particular, and that's fine. Sometimes we try and pick these pinpoint passes to the player and they get intercepted specifically in the box and then we're on the back foot straight away. Ollie Watkins just passed it into space there because he knew there wasn't a Burnley player on Anas's roar. Leon Bailey picks it up, skips inside, takes a shot, deflected. If you don't shoot, you can't score. It's something I've been giving out about with Villa recently. And Bailey's gotten two goals like that. That was his goal against Man City was similar, albeit from a uh, uh, further out distance. Uh, takes a clip off a player, loops up over the goalkeeper into the back of the net. Have to shoot if you want to score. And Leon Bailey is the embodiment of that for Aston Villa at the moment because his goals are taking clips off players and that's not a negative. That's exactly what you should be doing. You know, should be taking shots. And if they take a clip off a player and go in, 
what about it? Not every strike has to win the Pushkas Award. You know, and fair play to Leon Bailey. He's been absolutely brilliant uh, this season. Absolutely brilliant. It was great to see Diaby get on the score sheet again as well. You know, um, they did a Trojan work down that side in an attacking sense. Diaby was wasteful. He could have had a hat trick, um, but he got his goal, and the confidence is going to grow more, more and more with him again. He doesn't seem to be able to play 90 minutes in, in the Premier League just yet. And once again, the speed of the Premier League might be something for him and the physicality. He got fairly buckled at one stage. Um, was it by Charlie Roberts? No, Charlie Taylor. Charlie Taylor buckled him in the first half as well at one stage. So he does come in for, for some, um, some, some tough treatment at times. But I was delighted to see him score his goal. You know, we missed chances. We missed a lot of chances. Uh, Ali Watkins had a fresh air. Albeit, I think Watkins was 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 very good. He had two assists in the game today. Um, did a lot of work. I would have loved to have seen him score a goal on his birthday. Um, Jacob Ramsey missed a very very easy chance. That was a shame. That for me was the one. That's the one that I I I looked at and I went, man, that's not that that could be the one that comes back and bites us. Um, and luckily it didn't because we got that penalty. And as Paddy said, but goalkeeper, so or not the goalkeeper, but the referee side of things as well. You know. It's just, it's so up in the air. You just never know what's going to be given and what isn't going to be given. Like Ollie Watkins being tugged down in the box, but because he gets his pass away to Diaby. Was it Diaby, I think it was, who Scott, who put it over the bar? Um, there's nothing given. Uh, I thought that was a tug in the box, but, but look, as I say, we got our penalty afterwards anyway. Um, the only reason I've got a gripe about that is that Burnley went straight down the field and scored the, almost directly after that passage of play, which I, I found was uh, was... Was nine, I think, for me. Um, a couple of other comments there as well. Uh, Andy Brogan says, "You've seen the villain now for car form." Exactly. <laughs> That's the way I felt. That's the way I felt about this. I've seen Villa; they were all right, just about all right, and we won. Now it's time to go home and have and have dinner and and uh, enjoy the next few days before Villa are out again. That's kind of the way I felt. Uh, I, I I felt as well. Um, mm -mm -mm. Anything else here? I, there was another comment I'm just looking for here. Um, apologies. This isn't great podcasting, but um, mm, mm, yeah, David Dwyer says not many games in the next 25 days anyway. Um, mm, 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 I can't find that. I can't find that game or that, uh, that comment. Yeah, I can't find that comment. Oh, there it is. It's Michael O'Brien. Yes, he says, we're tracking ahead of where Newcastle were at match 20 last year. That's what I keep looking at. Absolutely. And Newcastle, you know, Newcastle's form didn't dip. And, and I, you know, I would consider what we're in in the moment a dip of form. And we've still gotten four points out of the last nine. Um, so, yes, <laughs> arguably we should have had nine out of the last nine. But we've gotten four points out of the last nine. And it could have very easily been no points out of the last nine as well. So the fight back against against Sheffield United... Yes, you could say that that was kind of um, that was kind of uh, written off the board. Then with the you know the 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 fact that Man United came back from two goals down, but today again conceding late, we've come back and we've scored another another late goal, and we looked like even though we were the, we were the better of the two teams out there today, we created way more chances, you know. And uh, but as I say, we've gotten out of gotten a result out of this game again, and, and we move on towards the new year. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up because I'm I too, just like Paddy, I'm getting getting beckoned in for my for my dinner, so I better go and eat some sustenance. Um, but thanks so much, everybody, for popping on. Um, back now full time again. I was at a family wedding uh, right there over the last couple of days, so wasn't really available to do any podcasts. And I just wanted to take time to to to, to kind of spend time uh <laughs> kind of away from it for a while, um, a couple of days. But uh, back again now for the for the transfer window in January and really really looking forward to it so I hope you'll join us um, for anything that we have going on there as well um, so that's Saturday, that's Aston Villa 3, Burnley 2 and uh, that's it really for 2023 so I want to echo what Paddy said as well, I wish you all an absolutely massive next few days and I hope 2024 is the best year that you ever have because um, everybody deserves it Everybody deserves to have a fantastic year. I hope 2024 is that year for everybody. So thanks very much, everybody, for watching and listening. Really appreciate it. Um, stay safe, stay healthy. And all that's left to say is up the villa. <laughs>